This is Jim Smith. Today I'm visiting John Avenson's house at 9988 Hoyt Place in Westminster. It is a net zero energy house built in 1981 as a model of sustainability and has been enhanced year over year by John to become even more sustainability to the point where it now is net zero. And here's John. John, tell us about this house and a little bit about its history and what we'll see when we walk through it. Thanks, Jim. This house would not exist if it weren't for President Carter. He helped launch SARI, the Solar Energy Research Institute in Golden, now called NREL, National Renewable Energy Labs. And in 1981, Carter stepped off the airplane and announced his financing. There was a contest that SARI held of 300 builders across the state of Colorado gave them seminars and said the top dozen of you who do the best job we're going to put you on the first ever parade of passive solar heated homes and this is one of those homes we're about to see uh, so moving on uh, yeah tell show point out the things that we see on the outside here before we go in and mm -hmm. look at the interior components yeah rule number one from Sari was solar access the orientation of the house should face south the roof should have no plumbing protrusions from bathrooms or kitchen sinks so that you have full potential for future solar panels. Uh, there were two foot overhangs over all the windows except the three living room windows. They had solar screens originally. Now they're covered with automated shades. Uh, the ceiling and wall insulation, R values, kept the heat in the house, they are two to four times greater than the standard house, in 1981 that is. Now the walls are R55. Uh, the house was built with triple pane windows in 1981, but it was air insulation, which was only worth about R2. Uh, today's Alpen quadruple pane Krypton windows are R13 in the center of glass, better than a two by four wall that's R9. Wow. Uh, the foundation uh, was ex insulated from the cold earth with polyiso, imported from Australia way back then. Uh, there's, so the foundation and the poured concrete floor uh, create a thermal mass inside the house. Uh, also because of these three floors of total windows, you have a lot of greenhouse hot air in the winter solstice of December 21st. So lots of heat is building up and you must have a de-stratification fan. We'll see what sucks the hot air off the ceiling of the living room, vaulted ceiling, down to the basement, and up through a rock box all day. Wow. It, uh, so that's a 14-inch duct from the ceiling to the basement, and the rock box is in the center of the house, hidden where no one can see it. Uh, we'll see that later. That rock box is what's called a thermal mass. Correct. Because it absorbs heat and then releases it. Yep. And also inside the house are brick walls. Instead of having brick on the outside, let's make use of that brick thermal mass. Mm -hmm. And uh, those also reduce the swing of temperatures from cold to warm in the winter. Also, it, what pre-built into this house was a hollow chase for future installers to run pi uh, pipes or wires so it's hidden out of sight you're not ugling up the house with uh, external pipes uh -huh. um, the front door had an airlock entry system you first close one door before opening the second oh, that door. was original you didn't add that uh, correct uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and of all futuristic things all these windows were wired for electric shades Sari said that humans are lazy they don't uh, raise and lower the shades when they get out of bed and in a house like this that depends on the sun for winter heat you must have those shades up or oh, you're, you're going to get cold. So those shades go up and down at the appropriate time during the day and Siri had them automated in that way as well. It's uh, not just you doing it nowadays. Well they had the uh, uh, correct. I couldn't afford them at the time so it was just the wiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, but, uh, right, right. So um, and with what that, else? we can uh, head on up. Okay. I, we, as we walk towards the house, I notice these black panels below the basement windows. Yeah. Explain what those are. Uh, those are solar hot air, I mean, hot air panels. They bring in the room temperature from one end. It goes across horizontally to exit the other end. And in that seven feet, you're going from possibly 68 degrees to a 
putting out 160 degrees on each one of these panels. Okay. They're worth 20,000 BTUs per hour. Right, and you have them on the uh, the west-facing side as well. So I have seven of these. Seven of these, and of course they're turned off in the summertime. Correct. They're blocked. That, and, that flow is blocked. And notice all these windows are shaded in the summer from May 5th uh, to the end of August. It's mm -hmm. the way the sun rotates the the earth rotates around the sun. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, let's go inside now. Before we go inside, John's going to show you the uh, brains of this building, or at least where they're uh, electrified. Go ahead and open this panel and show us what's inside and explain it, John. So in 1981, this was well insulated above its date uh, with R19 walls, uh, but after taking the Theus Passive House college courses, I realized I'm way out of date and uh, so, look at all these wires. Uh, this is all um, remote wireless monitoring of the electrical circuits, mm -hmm. so that I can get warnings on my phone of the, the washing machine is on or off, uh, refrigerator. I know the electricity usage of almost everything in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, and for insulating up to the passive house standard, if you walk over behind me, you'll see exposed here. Uh, this here's the original inch and a half of polyiso from Australia, and here's eight more inches of polyiso that I added yeah. in 2015. Yeah. By adding the walls up to R55, I was able to remove the backup gas furnace. Uh huh. Okay, so let's go inside and look at some of the other features. As we go to the front of the house, this is the inverter for the solar panels and. As I said, this is a learning center, so most people don't have these uh, documents and photographs explaining how the house was built, but uh, John does because he's so committed to teaching others about how the house was made so sustainable. Let's go out front now. Here we are at the front of the house, and John's going to explain some of the elements of it. So go ahead, John, and, and tell us uh, what what makes this a good north-facing house? The, so part of the logical Sari design of a, any passive house is to have minimal windows on the north, east, and west sides. Windows are like a hole in the wall. Uh, you'll notice that the roof of this house has no chimney. Mm -hmm. That tells you that we are a modern house that doesn't have fossil fuels. Or I use a mini split that's very minimally on, only 500 watts when it's mm -hmm. needed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see a couple solar tubes up oh, there. Yeah. We'll have uh, some daylighting from solar tubes. We'll see those on the inside of the house. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else to learn from this, or uh, shall we go inside the, now? That's a weather station that's running the uh, home uh, environmental monitor compu computer, EMC. Mm -hmm. uh, it compares the temperature inside the house to what's happening weather-wise outside the house. Okay, and now we're approaching the airlock, two doors. Uh, um, Correct. And this, explain this little uh, graph that you have so here. As an energy audit, you always get uh, certi certifications, and this has been reported to Energy Star, the U.S. Department of Energy. I, a standard house runs anywhere loose air between 100 and 150. My house is a HERS 3 currently. Wow, very impressive. Okay, so let's go inside. So, so first With you go in the, the airlock. Door. This door leads to the garage. No fossil fuels, no furnace used to keep this house warm. <laughs> airlock entry prevents north wind from entering the house. Yeah, after you spend all day warming up, you don't want to fill the basement with okay. cold air. Okay, so let's go inside now. I'll take off my shoes first. Okay. And view the stand right here, and we'll see the open architecture of the house. Mm -hmm. Great French uh, As we stand here, this is the environmental monitor computer that's running the house. There are 100, over 180 endpoints in this house that it can control. Uh, each one of these graphs is five days of window temperatures. That's how the computer knows when to raise and lower the shades. Um, the uh, sun's roll, solar radiation over 24 hours, five days of sun here, 
Uh, wow. And so we'll learn. you can learn more about this when you come to visit me. I'm always open to the public. Okay. I'm a member of Passive House since 2011. Uh, this is the German building code that they took from the research of SERI from 1980s. Uh, the Germans escalated this into a Passive House official building code, and Theus of the uh, United States has gotten this accepted by the U.S. Department of Energy as the top-of-the-line building code. Wow. Uh, this was an, uh, an award-winning <clears throat> plaque at Dallas, the Denver Coliseum in front of about 3,000 engineers for my attempts to educate the public. Yeah, well, you uh, certainly do that. This is uh, the Colorado Green Building Guild, uh, best retrofit of 2014. Mm -hmm. So it's still considered a retrofit because you've gone so much further than Siri <laughs> did exactly. when it was built. Yeah. I want to be teaching old 1981 technology. Yeah, right, right, right. Ah, uh, we forgot to raise a bullet of shades outside. Uh, so this is the view inside the house of the solar exposure in winter time. Right. We have clear story windows for daylighting and extra heat. All that heat must go somewhere. It has to be handled, else you'll be overheated. Yeah. This is a... Uh, it, I should point out that it's about 9.30, 10 a.m. On a, on a sunny summer day in early June. It's not even the summer solstice yet. And there's no direct light coming in through these windows because of the overhang. But in the winter, with the sun down, the sun would be pouring in through these... Almost horizontally. Almost horizontally into this room, heating it up in the winter. That, but that, But it's shaded in the summer. That's the essence of... That's a, 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 a foundational element of passive house design. And working with Mother Nature. Working with Mother Nature and the sun. That angle of the roof is the winter solstice in December 21st. Oh, interesting. So <laughs> that's interesting. Now, why is it important that the it's angle not, of the roof... It's, it's not. Oh, just to demonstrate the angle <laughs> that the sun would be in the winter, at, on, the summer, on the winter solstice. While we're on the subject... Yeah, just as mothers measure the height of their children when they are growing up, yeah. I measure the date of the sun oh, really? as it goes through the seasons. So way down here... Well, it's not there at all in the summer. Yeah, on May 5th, yeah. that's the last we'll, sun we'll ever get into this house. Yeah. And then we have, um, let's see, uh, August and April, April 15th. Oh, there are words printed April on 9th. the... You can actually see uh -huh. the... Oh, I see. Okay. September 7. By the time you get to December, we're way up at the ceiling. Wow. Oh, interesting. And this is that thermal mass. Yes. Yeah, this is inside this uh, brick structure is uh, is more, th more mass, rocks. And so this thing wow. during that winter month gets heated up by the sun, even though it's not black, which up there. would do the most. Those, oh, and there up there is the that the region. vent... See the vent at the top that lets the hot air out. That's triggered by a thermometer, so a thermostat that's in behind the grill, and it's going to uh, suck that hot air off the top of the house down through a 14-inch diameter chute to the basement. Where does the air go into the uh, well, thermal mass? If down that's the basement floor. On the basement floor. Okay, so okay. And so here's the top of that rock box. Colonel, <clears throat> oh, yeah, you can actually so see that is 10 feet deep of river rock. Mm -hmm. Currently 70 degrees. This mm -hmm. is the cinder block box itself containing the box. Wow. And so that's 5 feet by 5 feet by 10 feet deep. And then there's another one over there. That's the back side of the box. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's three of these vents. So okay. this is the escape of the air that was sucked off the ceiling. I see. So that's warming up the rocks and the rock, the air comes through cool here of whatever temperature the rocks are. Good. In the winter time, the rocks will achieve 78, 79 degrees. Wow. Okay. Uh, Anything notable about the kitchen? Yes. Oh, there's a mini split up there, mm -hmm. which is really only backup, right? Correct. And that's uh, that powered by a heat pump, which is outdoors? Yes. And powered by the electricity from the solar panels, of course. Of course, yeah. Yeah, because you you'd probably generate more electricity than you use. Correct, yes. Oh, shiny electric shade, down. electric shade on it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, notice the clear story windows up there. 
Mm -hmm. These two left windows have a pattern on them. The two right do not. Oh, why is that? This is new technology from Alpen. These, if the sign on the bricks says Sun Redirect Film. And just like you have light shelves that reflect the light deeper into a room in high-tech office buildings, Alpen says, why not do that with laser etching? So there's microscopic horizontal lines that will take the winter sun and angle that 90 degrees up to the roof. Wow. And then if you have a reflective roof, it's lighting up the deeper ends of the room. Wow. But here's what the, happened with that technology. Look at what's behind here. Before we had the technology of laser etched film, I, oh. <laughs> the sun came up just like we saw in the bricks. December comes up here and it's heating up the cabinets. So I have insulation to keep my cabinets cool. Oh. It's totally been taken care of now. With, so that doesn't need to be on there anymore. Right. Right. And when you have a computer with a, a screen, if you were in an office, all that sun is out of your face. I can now use the computer and see my screen with this sun redirect film. Uh-huh. Okay. Anything else to note here before we move on? Uh, well, so a part of the uh, collecting energy is to use it judiciously. And so uh, compact fluorescent lights came out in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, they were one-fifth the electricity of an incandescent bulb. However, LEDs came about in 2003. This was the first LED light bulb. I paid 185 bucks for this thing. Wow. <laughs> and I like to keep it because it shows LEDs run on battery voltage. This is 120 volts. You've got to knock that 120 volts down to battery voltage with a power supply. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this shows you what's happening on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, this has evolved even in the last three years. They said, we don't even need a power supply. If I have 120 volts, I can use as many LED elements as possible that adds up to 120 volts in a string. Oh, I And see. so I don't need any power supply. This thing is featherweight, yeah. and it's putting out 110 watts of light in, in uh, incandescent terms. Uh -huh. And then underneath the cabinet, you can take out your fluorescent lights. This is from 2004, and put up LED lighting. Yeah. All of these under cabinet lights will run on a nine volt battery. That's how little they take. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, LEDs were invented when? Uh, in the early 60s, as an accident, when impurities got put into the baking <laughs> oven, and they were testing it, and the transistor glowed. They went, oh, why is it glowing? This is trash. But then they said, hey, it's a light source. So since the 1960s, we had only two colors, green and red. And the combination made orange-yellow. Mm -hmm. Finally, in 2003, they figured out how to make blue. That makes the three primary colors. Mm -hmm. Now we can have the first white LED color lights. By combining the three primary colors. Yeah, yeah. just like a TV set. Interesting. Now, why do you keep a ladder in your kitchen? Oh. Uh, so this has making use of all the storage spots. So these cabinets, oh. if you have a high ceiling, oh, okay. why not have uh, your cabinets way higher? Oh, okay, so not a sustainability <laughs> item. <laughs> Just an efficiency. And that vent up there, is that vent used for your... Oh, yeah, that's coming from the serve fresh air machine. In okay. The basement. Once you have a super tight house, we'll have a fresh yeah, air. Yeah, we'll explain the serve when we get down there. Uh, the heat pump is the highest tech one available. It is uh, SEER 42 and a heat efficiency rating of 15. This is a whole new generation of efficiency. Mm -hmm. And this heat pump will keep heating at minus 17 degrees Fahrenheit at 100%. Yeah. What people don't realize that uh, if you look at temperatures from a Kelvin standpoint, there is uh, plenty of uh, heat outdoors when it's minus 17. Yeah. And the heat pump's job is to extract that heat from the air and then for heat in heating mode. But then cooling 42 sear, the the uh, rules right now for air conditioning units is 13, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So this is like many times yeah. the... Uh, the efficiency of your standard uh, AC unit. Uh, so any air that is above absolute zero has energy to be had. Yeah, and since uh, heat pumps are entirely electrically charged, you're you're generating the energy for it from the sun instead of having to have natural gas. Yeah, mm -hmm. like for a furnace. Yeah. So logical. Yeah, so logical. We, we are in the great age of technology. Right yes, now. we are. So in the last generation of LEDs, we can now have 
oh, oh yeah LED lights oh yeah and I'm so not. if I want to paint my walls I can just choose what color are you I gonna want. change the color for me sure okay There's some yellow some red purple mm -hmm. blue yeah <laughs> and you can whatever your mood is you can change the colors okay probably more obvious at night yeah <laughs> when and I can change so if you turn the lights off you can see how bland the kitchen is it's yeah. almost like someone turned off the color knob on a TV set <laughs> yeah right <laughs> okay so what's next uh, we'll head to the solar tubes oh I'm sorry we want to explain the windows here Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. Here's Alpen a... windows are the next thing. In, in addition to super insulation, we want quadruple pane windows. These are filled with krypton gas. And those two middle panes are not glass, though, are they? Aren't they? Uh, in this case, it actually is thin glass. Oh, it is. Uh -huh. Because the triple pane has a filament in it. Yeah. Uh -huh. or... You can get filaments or thin glass nowadays. Yeah, okay. And the frame is filled with foam. Mm-hmm. Uh, the NFRC, every window manufacturer must be qualified by the National Fenestration Rating Council. Mm -hmm. And the U factor of these is 0 0.10. That what? is a huge R factor of R10. Mm -hmm. These glass windows, center of glass, this one is R17. This is mm -hmm. a low solar heat gain. That's a high solar heat gain with a center of glass of R13. Mm -hmm. Again, you could build a whole house out of this that's better than all these neighborhood houses. Okay. Um, I studied the temperatures for future. If you come to tour, you'll see the reason for all of these thermometers, center glass, edge of glass, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, normal people would not have all those sensors, <laughs> but then you're not normal. This And again, this is a learning center. Uh -huh. And this is an infrared camera. Yep. So this is a $3,000 option. <laughs> so there's our reflection right there. Yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah, right. And, and so this is how you can see the temperature of your bricks. You can see the faults of your house before uh, you are uh, um, building a house. Yep. yep. And in, so we're going to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Alexa, turn on outside shades. Oh, you use Alexa to lower your shades? Yeah, I've had voice control since 2004. Oh, wow. Using the Microsoft version originally. So you can still see through the netting. That's what I wanted yeah. to point out. Are these 90%? Uh, 80? Uh, I believe they're about 70. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, now normally they are, you, although you can tell Alexa to raise and lower them, they are programmed, the computer right. tells it when mm -hmm. to lower or raise it, in, especially in the winter. That's when, I guess, the issue, yeah. it's a more of an issue. So... The, uh, houses of the 1981 vintage tend to overheat, yeah. and this will keep you from overheating. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a few years ago, we had 80 degrees in November and 80 degrees in February because mm -hmm. of global warming. So I was forced to have outside shades to mm -hmm. regulate. Mm -hmm. Nothing is seat of the pants here. Yeah. <laughs> and then inside, so the computer is already automatically raising this. Oh, really? Yeah. You didn't tell Alexa to raise them. It, uh, right. The computer said, no, 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 no. These should be up right now. And and uh, interesting. And this is the uh, internal shades. Alexa, mm -hmm. turn on door shade. <laughs> this, Cute. These are the inside shades that reflect the heat back in in the winter time. They will go up when there's sun to be had to warm up the house. And they, when the clouds come, the shade comes down. Keep that heat in the house. Don't let it get out. Okay, the computer just raised it again. Yeah. <laughs> computer said that wasn't a smart idea. You betcha. Now, I don't, I don't suppose there's a reason why you have a wind turbine model in here, do you? The NREL, this is their project house. They like to experiment. And I asked the wind study division of NREL uh, about, can I demonstrate wind generators uh, at my house since I'm public facing? They said, no. If you put a wind generator up in this house, we'll take a picture of what not to do in oh. neighborhoods because the energy as a rule of thumb hits any object that goes up in the sky four times the height of that object and the energy finally comes down ten times the distance of that height of the object to back to the ground to ten times the height of the object. So there's no energy to be had to turn your turbine 
and be financially ahead. So solar solar photovoltaic is the That's only way the to only go. Way to so people should never get a wind turbine for their backyard or something. Correct, unless okay. they have direct uh, mile of wind coming at them. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So um, what's the effect of all those wind turbines on the agriculture uh, out in the fields? Just curious. Uh, it's it's nothing, and they've done a study of birds, and the birds see that, and they the infrared pictures show the birds fly around the outside perimeter. So it's it's not true that they kill birds? Correct. And they never did, or they've uh, done things no, to glass, stop that? Glass reflecting windows kill more birds than wind generators do. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> President Trump said you can go see a, a bird cemetery and oh, under oh every gosh. windmill, <laughs> under any w wind turbine. And also when I'm teaching kindergartners, I start with a black rock and a white rock. And yeah. I ask them, which rock's going to get warmer in the sun? And then these digital thermometers will... <laughs> and that's where this we is start. a classroom. This is a classroom. <laughs> I feel like I'm in class. Okay, where are we going now? We are going to... Uh, part of the weather station up on the roof, all that is wirelessly sent to this data center. It sends the data of outside weather to the house computer. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that's how the computer knows when to raise and lower the shades for lumens and temperature uh, deltas. Yeah, okay. Uh, also, see that that little vent on the Oh, yeah. Of, is this an ERV? Uh, no, that is room air condition, uh, room handling of air for oh. stale air. Oh, okay. So, uh, here's the control of the CRV, by the way. Okay. We'll see this downstairs. It's measuring CO2 and VOCs. Volatile and, organic compounds. Correct. And I can set this for... Uh, any amount of uh, CO2 level I want uh, and a recycle set. So you're saying you don't want the CO2 level to be higher than 600? At the, yeah, why not? Yeah, because yeah. Mm -hmm. the ambient air is about 400. However, Stanford University does a study on the human brain, and we start to slow down on our decision levels at 1,000 parts per million. Oh. And so in the conference room, if you don't have fresh air, but you have cold air conditioning, you may be falling asleep at a presentation because yeah. CO2 level might be up to 5,000. Maybe that explains Trump. Maybe the <laughs> CO2 uh, level is higher than 1,000 in the White House. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so let's look at the back of that fan. This, this room has hot air coming from the hot air panels outside. It's sucking oh, in. right, right sucking in the room temp air there and putting out superheated air at your feet so you have toasty warm toes in the oh, winter yeah, behind, time uh, behind the yeah, sofa those are so. putting out 160 degrees in and, the winter only and, and, <laughs> yeah well from february to march to may yeah. uh, because the sun is now up over the building if we have snow in the month of may that's my primary heating because the sun still sets in the west mm -hmm. you know, uh, this is the this is the uh, fan that is sucking air out of this room. Yeah. It's run by this computer right here. And this is courtesy of the money from marijuana industry. They have really run high tech into new fan air handling. Oh. So uh, any room that has uh, dead air, uh, you can uh, activate it with these, com these computer controlled fans now. This Interesting. Is four inch to six inch to 12 inch, any mm -hmm. diameter you want. Oh, interesting. Okay, are we done on this floor? Uh, almost. Almost. Uh, here's more sun tunnels. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the bathroom. Now, room. notice that we are well below the roof level. That's a long um, mirrored tube bringing that down. And it, does it bend at all, or is it straight down? Uh, this one's straight down, but it's still in the shade upstairs. Yeah. Yep. And that's a lighting kit you see inside. Oh, yeah, so you can actually turn it. That's a, a 5,000K. Here's the mm -hmm. bathroom one. The sun is hitting that one. Yep, so and this there's no lights on in this bathroom. Correct. Well, now there is. Yeah, there's automatic <laughs> light. Yeah. And up behind here is a fake fascia for the bathroom fan. So the oh, fan I see. is hidden behind Oh, it. you've integrated the fan with the yeah. with the solar tube. Okay. Uh, um, and what's in, in here? In the bedroom, we this was built with a fluorescent tubing yeah. originally in 1981. Uh, when LED lights came out, I want you to notice the color rendition... Uh, uh, why did it turn off? The computer's turning off unnecessary lights. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. Here, I'll turn it on again. I want to show you the... Oh, the computer is just really not cooperating here. Yeah. Uh, that's the... Look at the colors of the bedspread. Yeah. They are very pale. 
mm -hmm. uh, with the fluorescent lights. Turn on that switch again if you can. Okay. And then I'm going to turn on the LEDs and notice the uh, the bright colors yeah. of the LEDs. Okay. And then one other thing is fiber optics. Uh, this uh, is fiber optics experiment. Uh, if I go up to the roof and I focus the sun's light on this, this closet lights up like a light bulb. Oh. And I, my dream but is... But the light's not on it right now. The sun's not on it right now. Uh, I would have to focus it like a campfire on that. Oh, okay. And then it'll light it up. Okay. And that covers us for the... Yeah. Upstairs. Okay. So, downstairs now? I think so. Okay, going down okay. to the basement now. As I said, this is a learning center with all these interesting pictures around. And explain what this picture describes, John. Uh, this is the first step any homeowner should do is an energy audit. And an energy audit will put this blower door red tent, and that's a fan, in the house. It's going to suck the air out of the house. And it's going to find where all the leaks are in your house. And oh. I would recommend a tablet and paper and make notes to yourself. Take the next year to improve all your leaks, right. and then they will come back and show your improvement. I've had nine energy audits since 1999. To oh, show. really? Uh-huh. They're not cheap either. No. You love spending money. <laughs> but, but the comebacks are cheap. They're less than $100 for comparison. Yeah, right. And uh, it's a computer... There's a computer attached to that fan that tells you how airtight your home yeah. is. And as you make improvements, those subsequent ones can tell you in, in statistical terms how much you've improved the airtightness of your house. And so for relative purposes, a air exchange is ACH50. That is, the speed of this fan is simulating a 20 to 24 mile an hour wind outside. Mm -hmm. And every time the wind sucks the air out of your house, your furnace has to reheat the whole volume of that. And on loose houses, you're reheating that air 10 to 20 times an hour. Mm -hmm. Air exchanges per hour. Uh, so that's an ACH 50 number. On a passive house, instead of 10 to 20 time air exchanges, you, you can only allow a 0 0.5 air exchanges or less. Uh, so Per... Per, per hour. Per hour, okay. And so, so think of a passive house as a, tight as a car tire. Now, that leads us to talk about the CERV, which is in the uh, basement. So let's go explain the CERV and what it does. Mm -hmm. Now, most people have heard of ERVs, which are ener energy recovery ventilators. A CERV contains a heat pump yeah. unit, which will add heat if needed. Uh-huh, or add cooling, actually. Add, and add cooling. Uh, so... Just as basics, this was the bottom of the rock box. It's in the center of the house. Mm -hmm. Both the upstairs and downstairs floor plans are U-shaped because mm -hmm. this is an area you can't get to. This was the original fan. You can see the cinder blocks of the rock box here. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the 14 inch diameter tube. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 10 feet tall. This fan, old tech to pulling 300 watts, now has been replaced with a variable DC motor fan just like you saw in the closet upstairs mm -hmm. uh, and it's pulling one quarter of the electricity for the same airflow okay uh, so that that uh, half a the 0.5 air air exchange was from nature not from the ERV because the ERV is creating because of how tight the house is the ERV is creating an air exchange air changes uh -huh, per yes, hour. That's part of the code. Once you have a tight house, you have to have a fresh Right. House. So now you're actually bringing in more air, which... In a controlled manner. But you're bringing it in a controlled manner because the ERV exchanges the heatness, the hotness or the coolness of the interior air with that air that's coming in. So it yeah. works both in the, in the um, summer to cool that incoming hot air or in the winter to warm that incoming hot air. Uh -huh. And then the C part of it, which is Condition. Conditioning conditions that air so that it'll add cooling in the summer and add heating in the yeah. winter. The thought process was... If so I'm it's bringing, like a mini furnace, really. Yeah, yeah, furnace I'm, replacement, but it's electrical. If I'm bringing in outside environment to the fresh air machine, why not make use of that outside energy yes. for, for a heat pump? Yes, it's right. A okay, so you're going to show us yeah. the... Or, so physically... Okay, I'm on my point. knees here. Wow, there's a bunch of stuff here. So the rock box is above us. Uh, or next to way us. off to the right. I'll yeah, yeah. You. So here's your, wow, 
So all this... Uh, I'm making, because this is a retrofit house, I'm making use of the old furnace system. So I'm sucking oh, from... Oh, the ducts. Uh -huh. the, the ducts work for the forced air furnace is being used by this CERV. Yeah. Yeah. So all the ducts that used to feed hot air to the bedrooms are now sucking stale air out of the bedrooms. Right. They come into one of these tubes and they are exchanged with fresh air, which puts out, you saw the duct above the kitchen uh, mm -hmm. uh, refrigerator. Yeah. And also there's a duct feeding the basement right here. Yeah. You can hear it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you can actually hear the sound of the air coming. Is this an, this is coming in here, right? That's, that's fresh natural Fresh air. natural air here. Yeah. Okay. In, in the winter heating mode, it's, it can add heat, and that'll be putting out 112 degrees. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Uh, so the basements can actually be, in the morning, one or two degrees warmer than upstairs if I just have all the surveyor coming to the basement. Oh, okay. Which is opposite of a normal house. It's mm -hmm. cold in the basement. Yeah. Here is a graph that shows the uh, VOC, CO2 levels, re remo uh, relative humidity outside, inside, temperature outside, inside. And so if you have a sudden spike in VOCs, the shaded area shows how the serve engaged into high speed, and it's bringing in fresh air to bring that VOC back down under a thousand parts per mm -hmm. minute. Yeah. Per minute. Explain what some of those v VOCs are. What what uh, what's generating those? I know carpeting, new carpeting has a lot of VOCs in it, but what what's not, not all carpeting? Some carpeting. yeah, some carpeting is low VOC, and you want to ask for that. But what are the VOCs that even even shampoo with your perfumes is VOCs? Anything that you evaporates smell. into the air. Yeah. And the worst culprit is cooking with oil in hot temperatures. Uh -huh. If you can steam your temperatures, you have no VOCs, but oil and hot temperatures are okay. Perfect. And cats, uh, any litter boxes are a huge problem with VOCs. Oh, so uh, so a cat house would smell better with a CERV running? Uh, I would get it outside. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. So that's the benefit. And why do we do this? This is the history of oil. Oil was discovered in 1859. In Pennsylvania. And, and we didn't use it. Finally, World War II, we started using it. We started buying cars. And in 1950s, when I was born, we were taught that humans have conquered Mother Nature. No, we have found out we haven't. Right. We still have to live with Mother Nature. So this, they stopped publishing this in 2010 because fracking became popular, mm -hmm. and they didn't know how to forecast peak oil. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, in the thousands of years of human existence, this is a blink of the eye of our right. oil usage. Right, right. Okay, so what else do we see down here? Um, this is a learning instance. Besides the most amazing home theater I've ever seen. How wide is that screen? 12 feet. Yeah. And it, you use it for teaching. So yes. you use this home theater for teaching about sustainability, don't you? I sure do. Uh, and how often and, and where can people find out about it? Uh, so once a month, I hold the theus.org uh, presentations. So oh, I try to theus get to, is P-H. Oh, Passive House, United States. Institute in the oh, United States. Oh, P-H-U-S, yeah. Uh, okay. U.S. And... Uh, once I am the Southwest rep of Theus.org of the United States, yep. and I try to get professionals, craftsmen, tradesmen to come in, give their PowerPoints here, and it's also webinar, mm -hmm. and uh, the schedule is at meetup.com. Meetup.com, look for? Passive House Southwest, SW. Passive House spelled out and then SW. Uh -huh. yep. And I might also add that I got started by becoming a member of your state chapter of the American Solar Energy Society. ASES. And Colorado has Colorado Renewable Energy Society, CRES. And if you want to escalate your knowledge of renewable energy, join CRES. Yeah. Okay, great. I've been in one of your sessions in this room, and I also remember you feed, feed people. Ah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, one, so, so we're saving, solving global warming one house at a time. Here. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay, great. I see you have a popcorn machine over there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's solar powered. Bar full of food. <laughs> Over there, by the way, is more thermal mass on the brick wall that goes all the way upstairs. Is this your master suite? or That's the guest bedroom. Oh, guest bedroom. Okay. And yeah. it, that has its own uh, laundry room and shower and bathroom. Aha. Uh -huh. And behind here, by the way, is 
uh, the hot, hybrid hot water tank. This is a bookcase. You um, say hybrid, is it a heat pump, water? Heat pump, water pump. Uh, heat a water pump, heater. Water, which is using one quarter of the electricity. Uh, this bookcase is hanging on rollers on the rock box, and I can shuffle it to the left and expose where the hot water tank is. Oh, I guess you have to move this little yeah, dresser you first. Yeah, actually see the scratch on the ceilings. Oh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> okay. So, so. It's, that's a very important aspect, is a hybrid hot water tank. No electrical units needed. Yeah, okay. Okay, great. Anything else before we wrap it up? Gosh, I can't think of anything. Well, this has been an amazing experience. You were quite a teacher, and you've made your home into a real classroom, and... Uh, we can all be thankful that John Avenson is doing this, so thank you, thank you for that. Uh, and I'm open seven days a week, 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to? Do you want me to tell people your email address? Yeah, Avenson one at hotmail dot com. Okay, so they can call you. They can email you if they have further questions and or want to find out mm -hmm. where they can learn more. And the garage is a 40 amp service for a Tesla. If, well, mm -hmm. someday when I can afford one. Yeah, meanwhile, you're spending all your money on this learning center. Yeah. Yeah, right. So you've done a lot. I also have an outlet for electric cars at the front of the garage so my guests can plug in and get back home on their charge. Oh, okay, great. great. Yeah, every house should be built with that. Yes. Think of others. Yes, right. <laughs> well, thank you again. This has been a, quite a learning experience. And I thought I knew a lot, but I learned some more myself. All right. Thanks.